Hey guys, Red Raven here with part 3 of the Blue Complete Comprehensive Guide. In this one I'm going to be adding filters and effects to the sound that we made in video number 2, and we're going to make it even bigger with more movement. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a listen to what we had before. And, you know, that's not bad using only the in, uh, oscillators and envelopes for the volumes on those said oscillators. There's no filters or effects or any mod matrix or anything like that. It's just simple f pulse width modulation, some wave shaping and detuning, and volume envelopes that re-trigger at a tempo um, that is synced to the BPM of our uh, program. Sorry, I had to kind of get more comfortable in my chair here. So what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to make this bigger with more movement and effects. So if you remember from video two, we kind of have this sound split into two parts. We have A and B, which are kind of like the top end movement of the sound. And then we have C and D, which are like the undertone constant fading in sound. So if we go ahead and, and solo out A and B. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and route those with, with the destination box to filter A. And then we're going to route C and D to filter B. So this way we can affect each of our sections of sound with a different filter to get the most movement possible. Okay? So since we're focusing on A and B right now, let's go ahead and focus on filter A. And since this is kind of like the top end of the sound, I want to use a high pass filter. So I'm going to go with a 12 dB high pass. Now the way a high pass filter works, it's the exact opposite of a low pass. The higher the frequency, the more of the lower frequencies will be cut off. So if we rotate this up, there'll be less low end. And if we rotate it down, we get the low end back. Uh, reversely, a low pass would be with the knob where it is now, there would be only low frequencies in, and if we opened it up, the high frequencies would come back. Pretty self-explanatory. So since this is kind of like the gritty top end of the sound, we want it to be more top end than anything. So we're going to put it at about 200, 250 hertz about. We're going to go ahead and add a little bit of distortion here just to f add a little bit more flavor to it. And we're going to add some cue. So now we're going to go in to the envelope page again here. We're going to go to filter A. And this will sweep the filter frequency based on this envelope. Now this knob right here with E and V under it dictates which way it will sweep. So if we rotate it to the left, the filter frequency will go to the left. And if we rotate it to the right, it will go to the right. So if we had our frequency directly in the middle here, and we had this all the way to the left, with this envelope it would go from the, the knob would go from the complete left and then sweep down to where we have it. If we rotated it to the right, it would start over here and sweep down to the middle. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and put it back at our 200 to 250 hertz area. And we're going to go ahead and rotate the envelope to the left a bit here. We're going to add a bit of an attack. And we're going to decay it a good bit. And we're going to leave the sustain about in the middle here. So let's go ahead and take a listen now. <laughs> And that doesn't affect it like I want it to, so I'm going to go to the right. Yeah, there we go. There we go, that's a good bit of movement there. So let's add an LFO on top of that. So we're going to go to the LFO tab here, we're going to go Filter A. We're going to go ahead and turn the amount down a bit, because we don't want this affecting it a lot. We're going to turn the sync on and we're going to set it to one bar, so one over one. So let's take a listen now that we have a little bit more filter movement on top of the envelope. We're going to go ahead and turn this envelope knob down just a bit so it doesn't sweep quite as high up. Alright, that's kind of good. I'm liking that. Let's go ahead and turn the, the LFO amount up a bit here. No, I don't really want it that much. So we're going to turn it back down a bit. 
and we're going to leave filter A alone for now. So we can go ahead and turn oscillators C and D back on. We'll turn A and B off. And now we're going to be messing with filter B. Now since this is the low end part of the sound, we're gonna, I want to use a low pass filter. You could use whatever filter types you want and whatever combination you want and you can get different variations. Even using these same oscillators, if you were to just flip the, uh, the filter types around, you would get a different sound and a different taste or flavor, whatever you want to call, to this same sound. So when you build a patch the way that I do, you start with the oscillators and you make it as big as you can, and then you go to the filters, and then you go to the effects, and then you add even more movement. You create a patch that by the end has so much subtle movement going on that you can't even really recognize all the different amounts of modulation that are being done to the sound. And that's what makes a sound big and complete, and it just has a lot of body and soul to it. Okay? So in filter B, we're using a low pass, 12 dB low pass. We're going to go ahead and set the filter frequency up a bit, give it just a little bit of distortion here. And we're going to give it just a little bit of Q. And we're going to turn the envelope um, up to the right a little bit here. Go back to the envelope tab and highlight filter B now. And we're going to mess with this filter. So this one I kind of want to pluck and then stay down. Like that. So that's actually pretty good as it is. I'm going to add a little bit more resonance here so we get kind of like a, a 303 acid sound. There we go. Let's go ahead and roughen it up quite a bit with some more distortion. Yeah. All right. I like that. I'm going to go ahead and also add an LFO to that just a bit here. And this one, I'm going to use also a sine wave, and I'm going to sync it to, let's go with a one-fourth right here. And we're going to turn the amount like way, way low, so it's very subtle. Okay, now let's go ahead and bring this back in with oscillators A and B and hear how just those filter modulations add up to a different tone to our sound now. Okay, you can hear that the bass is now a little bit higher than the high frequencies. So we're going to turn the volume down a bit on filter B and turn the volume up a bit on filter A to kind of balance that out a bit. Alright, that's good, I like that. So now let's get into some effects here real quick. Now, as you know, you can see the filters both are routed to effects A by default. Now here's where a bit of choice comes in. You could route um, the high frequencies through their own single effect, or the low frequencies through their own single effect, or you could route them through both of the same effects and kind of gel both parts of the synth back together again. And that's what I'm going to do. But first, we should look at this box right here. To the left of filter A, there's a box underneath it It says mode, and by default it says parallel. If you click it, it says serial. Okay, now what this is, if you know anything about electrical circuits, parallel would be like two parallel lines running and never crossing. So that means that A and B would run completely separate of each other. If we run it serial, it would run filter A in to filter B, which would then run out to the effects or whatever we choose. So, we should kind of experiment here a bit and see what it sounds like if we take the high frequencies and run it through that same low pass. So we'll click it to serial and take a listen. And you can get, that's just one of the examples I was talking about. You can get a lot of different movement and sound out of this just by clicking around and experimenting. I kind of want this to go back to parallel and sound how we had it. All right, and I'm going to run these both into effects A. Now, a lot of my sounds, I keep mostly mono, as you know, um, just off the fact that a lot of big systems are mono. And since this sound has both high and low frequencies, we kind of want that to be mono for the most part so that the low frequencies in this sound don't get lost to phase cancellation if we make it stereo. So I'm going to stay away from a chorus or anything like that. But what I will do is first I'll add an amp simulator. 
Now what this will do is it'll simulate a guitar amp. Now by default the effects mix will be all the way up and there will be no guitar uh, amp model type selected or any distortion amount and the bass, treble, and volume sliders will all be at the halfway point. So if we were to play it right now, it's not doing anything. Now you might think that you would have to select a model type for the distortion to work. That's not true. You can just leave it as no model type and just use this as purely a distortion unit, which is how I mostly use it. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to turn the distortion up a bit here. And you hear that's pretty extreme. So we're going to turn that mix down on this a bit here. Okay. And I'm going to route this serial so that it goes from effects A into effects B here. And then I'm going to add a mono delay unit. I'm going to turn, I'm going to leave the mix where it is. And I'm going to turn the length up from 1 8 star to just 1 4 so that the delay is on the quarter beat. Okay, I'm going to turn the feedback down because that kind of gives a sound that I don't really care for. And I'm going to leave everything else alone. So let's take a listen now. And inadvertently, that will make your sound stereo, but that's okay. If I bring my mixer over, you can see that in effects slot one, we can with this knob here turn it from stereo if we turn it all the way to the right it will become mono so we can take a listen to it in mono and we don't lose a whole lot of character there so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this in mono and wrap it up for this tutorial and the next one we'll start talking about how to use the mod matrix and some multi envelopes to further this sound. We might throw in a couple more oscillators, who knows. We might use some other effects such as the step sequencer in blue and things like that to beef this sound up just a, a little more to make it just a little bit more unique than what you might hear in a preset bank that would come with blue. So one more time, what we've created so far from scratch sounds like this. <laughs> Play that at a higher octave. With just that one synthesizer, not even using all of the features of blue. We get a sound that big and with that much character. So we have like a pad slash sequencer built into this one sound and that helps you get a lot of ambience and movement with what few um, synthesizers you may be able to run based on your computer's processing power. I for instance have a pretty weak laptop, single core 1.86 gigahertz processor and only one gigabyte of RAM. So I try to get the most out of every patch so that I don't have to have 50 instances of blue running to make one nice pad sound. I try to make that one synthesizer as big and as wide and as emotional as I can so that I don't have to just layer up sounds to try to, to, to correct for um, lack of knowledge or just pure, um, I don't know, what would you, what would you call laziness, I guess, uh, while creating your sounds. So I hope you learned something from this. I'll come back with you in part uh, four of this series and we'll beef this sound up even more and we'll learn about the mod matrix, the multi-envelopes, and the step sequencer sections within Blue. So this is Red Raven, peace and out.